बिना चाहे टेक्नोलॉजी पनी पहला संसार चली गई थी तो अपनी तेजी बेला को मानव एक्टिविटीज प्रगति प्रोग्रेस प्रगति तेजी सारे थी है ना सनोता थी तो अ जति पनी टेक्नोलॉजी हरु इले जति पनी देखा पड़ी कुछ तो टेक्नोलॉजी ले बास्तम मानसिक को विकास लाई मानसिक ले गरीब को काम हो रहा है जनी काम इफोर्ट हो रहा है एकदम ही मल्टीपल गर्दे ले आएगा सा तेरे का दाखिली ठुलू जैसे विकास होने में सहयोग गरीब को सा तेरे का दा मोबाइली टेक्नोलॉजी ले अति देरी मानना चाहिए। I've been visiting the Mahansudatta High School for maybe six or seven years and I come to Kathmandu probably once or twice a year on average. I think what's appropriate technology for Nepal at this stage in its development is technology that works with the resources that they have available, that's practical for widespread use and that is economically sustainable. Although they have the computers and quite recently they've had access to the internet at a, a usable speed given the content that's on the internet is generally written for people who have fast broadband. It's still not easy because electricity very often goes out and um, that happens for three, four, five and at worst times up to ten hours a day. And so it's very difficult to plan a computer lesson when you're not going to be able to turn the computers on. So nothing is ever really actually simple in Nepal when you're trying to access or work with technology. Let's put it this way. Educationist Anna Peachy was keen to explore a hands-on geocaching workshop to develop her ideas about global access to digital technology. Not least because she is a member of the Open University team behind My Digital Life. I thought it was an opportunity to engage with active learning using visual and kinesthetic techniques as well as the conventional skills in mathematics and reading and so on. And that sort of pedagogy is quite different to much of the slightly formal teaching that occurs in most Nepali schools. So where is naught degrees longitude? Yes, brilliant. Well done. The GPS device is handheld, it only needs batteries, it's relatively cheap. And it occurred to me to try geocaching, uh, which is this kind of international game of hide and seek using GPS. And it introduces them to something that happens on a global scale. We started the workshop looking at use of the Cartesian axes, the X and Y coordinates which can be used on a grid map to locate an object. So we created a scale map of the playground and the children hid sweets and gave each other the coordinates to find them. So there's the gate and here's the office, so you need to look over there. <laughs> okay, go on then. We then translated that up to looking at latitude and longitude and swapping coordinates to locate some capital cities. What's this? GPS. 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 And what does a GPS need to work? Satellite. 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 Good. When I started talking to them about what GPS is, this global positioning system, which is something that was developed by the American military and they've got 29 satellites in the sky, how many satellites does this need to be able to see in about order to work? Three, about three. Three or four? Yes, excellent. So that's getting them to think about satellites and, and technology that's right out there in space, and I think that was quite an exciting aspect of the workshop. On the first day of the workshop, Anna explored mapping coordinates and the use of GPS equipment. Earlier, she had hidden an object near the Pashupatinath temple, a short walk from the school. This was to be the real test of the students' GPS skills. OK, so we're going this way, but the arrow says we need to go that way. Yeah. So as soon as we get to somewhere that we can turn around, we need to move that way. Understand? The Mahan Siddhartha High School is situated between the two World Heritage Sites of the Hindu Pashupatinath Temple and the Baltanath Buddhist Stupa, both close to the school. When you get to the point where the arrow keeps going round and you're walking in a little circle, like you've been doing, you know you're kind of here. So now is maybe the time to put this down and look at what your clue was. So what was the clue? The prize is planted in blue. The prize is planted in blue. 
also one of the school advisory members. A cash box or few cash box? Yes. Yay! Once the children found the geocache box, they went on to the Pashupatanath temple. Here, they logged the waypoint. So it says we're now 160 metres from where we were before, and this is the location we're at now. And what we want to do is store that, so we want to mark it. Today we're going to set our own geocache. Yes. And it's going to be this box. The final exercise of the GPS workshop was for the children to create and register their own geocache box with the formal contents of a logbook and pencil and objects for finders to swap in and out. So this is the coordinates where your geocache is going to sit in the corner of the office, in the corner of the playground. So we have to go to Bowder and find some way to make this into a code that they have to unlock. The creative dimension of the exercise was to create a number puzzle from the Bowder area. There are lots of stupas in Kathmandu, but Baudhanath is by far the biggest and holiest, and is the main centre for the Tibetan community in the city. The Baudhanath stupa is rich with imagery and provides lots of number opportunities from which the geocacher has to extract our clues. For example, the structure has 13 steps and rings reaching towards the higher levels of enlightenment, three platforms at its base, five colours in the prayer flags, and so on. Many visitors to Kathmandu come to Bauda, so using it as the starting point for our geocache is a nice opportunity to encourage people to look a little bit deeper and perhaps think a bit more about what the Buddhist imagery represents. So we've had some time at Bauda and you've all been round and had some ideas about your clues. So who had the number four? And what clue have you got for number four? How many noses are there in the face of Bauda Stupa? How many noses on the face of Bauda Stupa? Excellent, OK. Uh, number two, who has number two? How many elephants are there in the statue? How many? Elephants. Elephants, how many elephant statues? brilliant one. I saw the elephants and I thought of that. I wondered if somebody would think of that one. Once the clues were established and the site was registered on the geocaching website, it was available for geocachers to follow, discovering not only two World Heritage Sites, but also a small Kathmandu school committed to technological development. Thank you.